Greetings, it's Adam with the Ratanon Grata, and I get to announce that the great war between the first game consoles on the market, the Atari 2600 and the Intellivision, has come to a close after, what is it, 43 years? <laughs> uh, yeah, so that when, when it comes to console wars and uh, playground fights and, and things of that nature as to which console is the best. Before, it was the SNES versus the Genesis. It was the Intellivision versus the 2600. Now, granted, in reality, that was hashed out pretty well back in the day where the Intellivision, the Mattel Intellivision, had never managed to beat out the 2600 in terms of sales and in terms of cultural impact. Uh, but today it officially comes to a close as Atari has announced that they have purchased the Intellivision trademarks and games and that unites the competing brands. Just zooming in here so you can see this a little better. But as the press release on Atari.com mentions that uh, one of the world's most iconic consumer brands and interactive entertainment producers announced today it's a purchase in television brand and certain games from Intellivision Entertainment LLC, and they will rebrand and continue its business of developing and distributing the Amico brand game console with a license from Atari to continue to, to distribute new versions of the Intellivision games on the Amico console. Now this part of the statement has already caused quite a bit of confusion, particularly here on X where uh, somebody asked continue distribution of something that never started uh, and then Atari replied saying we did not purchase the console project and Television Entertainment LLC will rebrand and continue its business of developing and distributing the Amico brand game console. Ow, I... Th th that's doesn't answer it so when I think Amico brand console I think about what I saw uh, back in 2021 uh, in Lehigh, Utah, uh, the, when there was this event that I attended that had the uh, Miko console before it uh, kind of disappeared. It was supposed to have been released by this point, um, but just, yeah, it didn't work out like that. Now, Tommy Tallarico was at this event. I spoke with him. He did seem sincere, uh, but he was also open about some of the funding problems that they had with that. And my apologies on the video. This is actually one of my most disliked videos uh, ever on the Arcade Heroes channel. I did try to find footage. Uh, I know I had extra footage from this event, but it seems to have been lost in an older hard drive crash that I had in 2022. But um, anyways, so this, um, yeah, well, my understanding, uh, the gist of it from what Tommy was explaining was that inflation had already started to skyrocket and then you also had a lot of issues at this particular time. Shipping costs were enormous and so like what it was costing for a container, the costs on that jumped considerably and it would have forced Amico to raise the price quite a bit on their Amico console and they were trying to find a way to still sell it for I think it was $300 and uh, not lose money on that but I just don't think it was possible now they had this controller here and you know it was something that you could I mean it was usable and everything um, it was still early and whatnot but I guess that was sort of the thing that caused a lot of people to question things as to statements that Tommy had said online and he wrote quite a bit of stuff and made a lot quite a few claims uh, versus the reality of things because if I'm recalling correctly the intention of this console was supposed to have come out back in 2019 or 2020 something like that and when I saw certain games here it was not finished uh, yet. Let me see if I can find. So there was Evil Knievel, a mobile game, uh, rehash for the Amico. There was Astro Smash, which that one was fun. That and Shark Shark were just fine uh, to me. 
I know, granted, do these games look like anything incredible? No. And really, I think by the time that uh, the Amico should have launched, they, they really needed new hardware, as what, what they started with just was not that great, especially for the cost of $300. But uh, let me find uh, Moon Patrol. So uh, this was supposed to be a launch title for the system, and it was supposed to have um, been complete by this time in 2021. And yet, right about, let's see, right here, or right there, you could see they had placeholder text. So now it's like, if you have a game that's pretty much done, why do you have placeholder text that you've borrowed from Star Fox? <laughs> Um, that just didn't make much sense uh, to me. Um, and I know this caused a lot of debate online at the time. Uh, but getting back to what uh, Atari was saying here, that just doesn't really make sense. And a lot of people have been saying, so does that mean we're getting a refund for our console? Or does this mean that Amico continues on? I mean, that's what it kind of sounds like. Now, I haven't really followed what's been going on with Amico very much. The, the last time I really paid close attention was when they did the bizarre unboxing of the console that was shown in, these, in this video here. And it... Uh, that was really bizarre just because why do an unboxing on something that you didn't release because they did not release the console and so um, and you can still find that video online I think unless it's been scrubbed after this deal came through but my understanding is that there has been some kind of mobile app Amico mobile app that has allowed you to play some of the games on mobile but I've not looked it up I've not really looked into it I've not followed a lot of the stuff I it, from my understanding as well, it seems like Tommy Tellerico has no longer been on Atari Age, where he used to spend a lot of time um, arguing with people and uh, making a lot of claims, and I think in some ways giving too much rope for him to hang himself on. And so maybe that's what they mean, is that when they say Amico brand game console, it'll be handled separately with their app or something? I'm not sure, but... Anyways, that's that's part of the confusing. That's the most confusing part of this whole thing uh, here. But continuing on, it says Atari will seek to expand digital and physical distribution of legacy and television games, potentially create new games and explore brand and licensing opportunities as part of a long term plan to create value from the Intellivision properties. And then Mike Mika from Digital Eclipse, they recently acquired. Um, Atari, now by Atari Studio. Uh, uniting Atari and Intellivision after 45 years ends the longest running console war in history. And yep, that's accurate. As the Atari 2600 came out in 1977, September 11th, 1977 actually. And then uh, the Intellivision was uh, 1979. But the 2600 sold something like 30 million units, whereas the Intellivision only sold 5 million units through 1990. Um, but you know, there were a lot of famous ads of Atari versus Intellivision and uh, as it mentions here George Plimpton appeared in some of the uh, uh, ads too that they did and so yeah the, the, the war is over <laughs> so veterans you can hang up your hats I guess uh, but the purchase includes the rights to more than 200 titles from the Intellivision portfolio, which I had no idea they had that many, and the Intellivision trademarks. And Atari has been a valuable partner, and we have every confidence they will be resp a responsible steward of the storied Intellivision brand, said Phil Adams, CEO of Intellivision Entertainment. As I recall, T Tommy Tellerico uh, relinquished the CEO title some time ago, but remained president of Intellivision. And so it's been this Phil Adam person who, again, I've not really looked into really what's been going on uh, on all that stuff. But, uh, yeah, there, there's still some question marks up in the air <laughs> thanks to uh, this certain thing. And like I said, a lot of people that are asking, so am I getting a refund finally? Because there have been a lot of people trying to get a refund back from their Amico, which they were promised would be shipping in at least by 2022 after a lot of delays. And I do have to admit, as one of the people who was very active in the taco thread way early on, back when the, the Atari VCS was known as the Atari Box and the Intellivision Amico had just been announced,
announced. Um, for a while, it seemed like Intellivision was going to beat Atari to the punch and get out first and actually offer some exclusive games. Uh, I mean, for the, the few things that they managed to do right, I think exclusive games on their console was a good one. And it was smart of them from a retail perspective to be offering their games even though they were all supposed to be digital I, I think it would have been a lot smarter to do actual cartridges as opposed to digital only but they still came up with a way to offer kind of a hybrid so they would get some retail store space but maybe that's not as important anymore given that there's so much stuff online as everybody hates retail now but uh, yeah what do you think about this are you one of the people who lost a few hundred dollars on the uh, pre-ordering this console that never came to be do you think that television will still manage to buy it i mean perhaps they will actually be able to get some hardware out now depending on how much money atari spent on this and if they they continue this hardware on it's just uh, i mean again they they really should update the hardware i mean even when this came out it was very low powered mobile hardware it didn't seem to be much more powerful maybe even less powerful than the Atari VCS which was not a powerful system to begin with um, they did manage to create some interesting games like I from what I played of Moon Patrol here it was fun uh, I played it all just like Moon Patrol from back in the day um, again it's not a looker at all you know it looks like a <laughs> PS2 era game and maybe even uh, before that, but uh, you know, at least they were doing stuff like that. There were some silly games that they just kept focusing on, like cornhole. It's like nobody cares uh, about cornhole, especially if your target market is supposed to be retro gamers and, and whatnot. I guess stepping back a second, when it comes to mistakes that uh, in television made uh, in, or Tommy Tellerico made, and all this was just the emphasis uh the, the attempt to try and brand this as an alternative to the wii wii u and switch um just was very misplaced it's like you're not going to beat nintendo at family friendly you're not going to beat nintendo on couch gaming you could still offer those things that's fine um but it, i think it just should have been more we're looking at affordable gaming is, is what our main focus is but they also had some weird developer restrictions like no m-rated games at all and stuff and it's like i get that with when it comes to trying to maintain the family friendly image but just banning it outright and not allowing it whatsoever um it just seemed a little bit short-sighted because it's like you could easily have parental controls on your machine now i guess one of the arguments that he made was oh we don't want to even have parental controls because we, we don't want to risk it or whatever uh, but again, I just don't think that using the using the business model of say 1985 and trying to do that in the modern day was really going to work out, and then obviously it didn't seem to. But where do you think this is going to go? Is it uh, going to remain the foot bath? <laughs> is it going to actually come out? Or are they just going to keep doing the mobile app? Um, or maybe they'll take the money that they got and start over, or maybe they'll take the money that they got and retire to uh, some tropical island somewhere. I don't know. But, uh, let me know what you think in the comments below, and uh, we'll catch you on the next video.